So welcome back to Mastering Solidity, the video series where I'm giving you a crash course in blockchain development. This is video number two in the series where I'll go over some essential aspects of Ethereum smart contract development. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you want to take that next step towards mastering blockchain, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, let's start programming. So head on over to remix.ethereum.org to get started. This is a browser-based IDE where we'll write all the source code for the Ethereum smart contract in this tutorial. We'll compile it and we'll deploy it to a blockchain all inside of our browser. All right. So go ahead and uh, navigate to the file browser and click the plus icon here. This is how we'll create our first smart contract. So we're going to call this my contract. All right. And the point of this contract is going to be to showcase uh, lots of different features of the Solidity programming language. In particular, we're going to talk about variables, all right, data types, and also custom data structures. All right. So I'll show you that right now. The first thing we want to do is create a smart contract for showing these types of things. We do that like this. We say pragma, solidity, and then we pass in a version. So I'm going to say um, version 0 0.6.0. .0. All right. I'm going to bump the font up here. And now what I want to do is create the smart contract like this. We say contract my contract, and then we put all the rest of the code inside these curly braces just like this, all right? So the first thing that I wanna talk about are variables, okay? And variables are basically just a way of storing information that you can reuse inside your smart contract, okay? So there are two different types of variables that I really wanna talk about, all right? So state variables and local variables. So let's start with local variables. So what, basically what local variables are, are ways that you can store information that can be reused, you know, inside of functions, essentially. So I'll show you what that looks like, like this. We'll say function uh, get value. This will be a function where we basically just return an arbitrary value inside of our smart contract. We'll say function uh, get value. And inside of here, we will return the value of a basic local variable, all right? So in this case, it'll just be a number. So we'll say uint value equals one. So let me explain that. This is a variable. It stores the number one, and the type is an unsigned integer. We'll talk more about that in a minute, okay? So basically, we can do things with this variable. We can, you know, do math with it. We can say value, uh, you know, add one. We can manipulate it. We do all kinds of things, but for now, we're just gonna return it. All right, so basically it allows us to store this information and do things with it later. For now, we're just gonna return it with this function, okay? So we'll observe this uh, by saying public pure returns uint. All right, we're actually gonna create this function so that we can call it outside the smart contract, all right? So that was how you do a basic local variable. And you can do a lot more with these, which we'll see in this tutorial series, but I wanna first illustrate what a local variable looks like as opposed to a state variable, all right? So we can do a state variable like this, right? So a state variable would look like uint, you know, my uint, and that would look like one right here, okay? So what's the difference between these two things? Well, a state variable here is actually stored on the blockchain itself. And we could potentially even update this value later, especially if we did this, uint public, my uint, all right? This basically creates a way for us to fetch the value of this, all right? So this value here is just local to this function. You know, value cannot be read anywhere else. Like if we create a new function down here, uh, we couldn't access value. Okay, but if we do create a new function down here, we could access my uint, all right? So there, that's called variable scope. Uh, the variable scope is only available for value inside of this function. Uh, but you know, if we create, you know, like function two, like I was saying a second ago, we could say like get value two, uh, or say we could say get, um, let's see here, get my uint. Uh, we wouldn't be able to return value here, 
because value is only available inside this function, but we would be able to return my uint. We could say my uint and it will work just fine, okay? So the other point is that uh, state variables exist on the blockchain. So you can think about the blockchain like a database in this way. Uh, we could update the value of my uint later and change it to two or three, right? Um, and that information would get stored in a transaction on the blockchain and this would actually update, all right? But value here doesn't really change unless we tell it to inside of this function uh, and its value doesn't actually get recorded to the blockchain, it's just stored in memory inside this function. All right, so that's the difference between a local variable and a state variable. So let's look at some more state variables to talk about uh, different data types, all right? So that's really important. So in this case, uh, the first you know, data type that we looked at is a uint, which stands for unsigned integer. I'll explain that more in a second. Uh, but we can also look at like int, all right, and say public my int equals one, all right. So my int um, is an integer, and then my uint is an unsigned integer. So what's the difference? Well, uh, an unsigned integer can't have a sign, which basically means it can't have a negative in front of it, all right. That's what a sign is, you know plus or minus. Um, so that's the difference between an int and a uint, all right? So there are different types of uints. We can say uh, uint 256, all right, public. Uh, my uint 256 well, could also equal one. It could also equal like, you know, uh, one billion or something like that. But for now, we'll just leave it as one. And then finally, we can say, you know, uint eight, public, my uint eight equals one. All right, so they're all different types of unsigned integers. And so what's the difference between uint 256 and uint eight? Well, these are just different sizes and this specifies you know how big the actual number can be. So if you don't want the number to ever be very big and you want to optimize performance inside your smart contract, you would use something like uint eight. But if the number needs to be really big um, and you need to allocate more space for it and you're willing to sacrifice performance, you can use uint 256. All right. So what's the difference between uint and then we, you know, what is uint without any number at the end? Well, it's just short for uint 256. So by default, it uh, defaults to this value right here. Okay. All right. So that's how you can work with numbers. Let's look at some other data types. All right. So these will be state variables. Uh, I'll take this away. I'll only leave it for now. Um, let's look at strings. All right. So what is a string? Well, basically, it's just, you know, um, a, a collection of uh, characters that you see on your keyboard strung together, surrounded by quotation marks. So a string could look like, you know, hello uh, world. All right. We can store these inside of smart contracts as well. We just say string, all right, public my string equals hello world. Okay. So that's what a string looks like. All right. And also notice that I'm putting the type here before the variables. This is what it means for Solidity to be a statically typed language. You must declare the type before you uh, do the variable. Sorry, this should be my string. And also uh, once you assign this value to a string, you can't later assign it to a number or something like that. That's also a feature of a statically typed language like this, all right? So that's how you would store a string. Um, you know, you can do that here with value as well. This could be my value. You could change this to string. Uh, value, you know, it could be hello world. All right, and you can just return value like that. That's how you'd work with a local variable. All right, so um, let's see here. We can also do uh, bytes 32. So that's gonna be more performant than a string, which you might wanna use in some cases. So like bytes. 32, uh, public my bytes 32 equals hello world. All right, so you can see that there are sometimes this, you can do things the same way, uh, or sorry, the same thing different ways in Solidity. And a lot of times the reason for that is performance because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're thinking about optimizing how your smart contracts work to minimize the amount of money uh, that has to be used inside of transactions and also the amount of time that something just takes on the blockchain because blockchains by, by nature are very slow. Okay. So the next um, thing I want to talk about, uh, another data type would be an address. So on the blockchain, um, every user that's connected to the blockchain has an address. Every smart contract on the blockchain has an address. This basically tells us where uh, it comes from. 
So we can store addresses in the smart contract like this. We can say address uh, public my address equals, I'm just gonna paste an address in here off from off screen. All right, like this. So this is what an Ethereum address looks like. So if you have MetaMask installed or something like that, you can just put your own Ethereum address or you can go to a website like Etherscan and just find any Ethereum uh, smart contract address and paste it in here. So make sure you don't put it quotation marks or anything like that around it. Just put the raw address here, uh, of course, with zero X in front of it, all right? And we just store that as an address type on the blockchain. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you in this video are how to create your own custom data structures. And we do that with something called a struct. All right, so you can create a struct like this, because uh, I struct uh, my struct, all right, and then you just put curly, oops, sorry, put curly braces after it like this. So structs are basically a way for you to just model any arbitrary data. All right, so this could you know represent a person, it could represent uh, you know a vote or really anything. All right, and you can put your own data types inside the struct. So for now, we'll say you know uint my uint, and then string my string. All right, so you know this for example, this could be a person, and the person could have an ID, and the person could have a name. All right. So sorry, this, I don't know why this keeps highlighting things. It's kind of annoying, um, but you get the idea here. You know, I can create, this could be a person, this could be a vote, uh, this could be, you know, a uh, ballot or something like that, all right? Or, you know, whatever, whatever you're voting for. So for now, let's just keep it as my struct. And we'll say my int. I'm just being consistent here with the other examples. All right, and then my string, okay. All right, now let's um, go ahead and uh, create a way to fetch this struct. I'll show you how to use it. Um, so this just creates, this just defines the struct right here, but we haven't actually used it anywhere inside the smart contract. So we'll do that like this. We'll say my struct. So this is, you, you know, you defined a custom type here and we'll put the custom type before the variable. Say public, uh, my struct equals my struct. This is how you instantiate it and say one and then hello world. All right, so you can see that the struct is sort of a way of, of grouping values maybe. So we do my int here, I like guess one, and then my string is hello world. We can just put those inside of a struct like this. So public my struct equals, you know, the u int is one and the hello world is the value, okay? All right, so let's watch all this in action, okay? Um, if you didn't watch the last video on how to set up Remix, uh, go ahead and check that out. But if you don't, um, yeah, yeah, you need to check that out because I'm going to compile it and you may not actually have this button here. Um, so if you don't have this button, go check out that last video on how to find it really quickly. You know, you can go to the plugins and just search for the compile uh, plugin and then also the deploy and run plugin and that will get you there. Okay, so let's compile it. Uh, make sure you do Solidity version 0.6.0. .0. Uh, compile the smart contract. Um, uh, actually let's do, let's do 0 0.6.4. Let's try that. Okay. So we have a little issue here. Um, let's go back instead of get value. Let's do, let's change this to, um, go back to the int or u int value is one. All right. Let's just avoid this problem altogether. Okay. So make sure your smart contract looks like this. I'll have the code for this down in the description below. So if you have any trouble, you can just copy and paste what I have. All right. So I'm just going to do 0 0.6.4 or let's just do 0 0.6.0. All right. Let's be consistent here. All right. We'll do that. Um, so it's compiled just fine. Now let's go to the deploy step. All right. So this is from earlier. Clear this out. Uh, make sure you click it and make sure you click uh, JavaScript virtual machine. Just keep the first smart contract selected and click deploy. All right, there we go. There's a smart contract. So now we can fetch all these values. Uh, so get value should return one. All right, boom, there we go. So my address here should return this value. All right, there we go. My bytes 32 should return this uh, encoded, which we should see here. Boom, there we go. All right, so you could uh, convert this in your front end, but that's the more performant way to pass the data around. So my int uh, should be this, all right? My string, hello world, yep, hello world. My struct should return these two values, one and hello world, yep. 
my uint, all right, and my uint 256, and my uint 8. All right, perfect. So all these work just like we expect. So that's how you um, use local variables, state variables. Here are some essential data types in Solidity. Um, here's how you create your own data structures, uh, custom types. We're gonna talk about arrays and mappings probably in the next video. Um, and those will be some more um, data types that are really important that you'll use a lot in Solidity, all right? So check out that next video when it comes out. Until then, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below so that you're more likely to see that video. Um, and you know, if you're serious about becoming a blockchain developer and wanna take that next step, um, then I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step, all right? Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.